Hi, welcome to another video. So, Huawei has made a new GPU, and this one is actually special because it is a very economical option. Well, this is the Huawei Atlas 300i Duo. They already had another GPU with the same name that had about 48 gigs of VRAM, but now they have launched a new one that has 96 gigs of VRAM. In theory, they have just combined two 48-gig GPUs into one. This GPU is economical because it costs about $1,500. This is probably one of the cheapest GPUs that you can get with this much memory in a graphics card. But there are some caveats with this, which I'll also talk about. So, why does memory matter? Well, memory matters because the LLMs that you run need memory to load into the system and then do inference. This means that the bigger the model is, the more memory you need, and good LLMs are generally very big. You can generally consider that it takes about 1.5 times the memory per parameter. So, a DeepSeq model would take about 1 terabyte of graphics memory to run. There are quantizations that make the model smaller by compressing the layers, or sometimes just removing them, and then you can fit it into something smaller. But generally, that's the math. However, there's a bit more that we need to understand. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. So, the issue is that these graphics cards cost a ton of money. An RTX 5090 costs $2,000 for a mere 32 gigs of memory. An RTX 6000 costs $9,000 for 96 gigs of memory. This is a pretty steep cost for a smaller amount of memory. Making a cluster out of them is a pretty big cost. And that's why most of us can't run these kinds of models locally. However, some exceptions are available that give you a good amount of memory for less. For example, Apple's M3 Ultra can get you about 512 gigs of memory in a Mac Studio for $10,000. Or, the new Ryzen AI Max processor can get you 128 gigs of memory for a mere $1,700 price tag. And now, the new Huawei can get you about 96 gigs of memory for just $1,500. But there must be some catch, right? We are getting such a big amount of memory for so little, while the NVIDIA models or general graphics cards are much higher in cost. Well, there is a catch, and it is the memory bandwidth. Memory bandwidth is basically the speed of the memory. The higher the speed, the faster the processing speed and tokens per second you will get. So, if we look at the RTX 5090 or RTX 6000, they have a memory bandwidth of about 1.7 terabytes per second. An M3 Ultra has a memory bandwidth of about 810 gigabytes per second, which is half of what you get with a dedicated graphics card like the RTX 5090. But remember, something like the RTX 5060 Ti, 5070, or even a 5080 has the same speed as an M3 Ultra, which means the M3 Ultra is still pretty fast. It's just not as fast as the RTX 5090 or other top-of-the-line cards. Then, an AMD Strix Halo 
has a memory bandwidth of a mere 256 gigabytes per second, which is really low. But the cost is also really low. And still, you can run LLMs of a good size on it. However, it will be really slow, even if you run smaller models. Similarly, this Huawei GPU only has a memory bandwidth of 204 gigabytes per second, which is really low by today's standards. Technically, it would be better for you to get a proper computer with the AMD Strix Halo APU, which has the same memory size and bandwidth and is also a full-fledged computer. But the issue with that is you can't cluster it easily. With this, you can, and that's why it makes sense. Huawei is also working on their new GPUs, as teased by DeepSeek. So, we'll probably get a refreshed version of this pretty soon that should cost almost the same, but have better bandwidth, which will be awesome. The only issue that remains is CUDA. CUDA is NVIDIA's library to run LLMs. AMD has their ROCM, and Huawei also has their CAN, which is now fairly well supported in things like Llama CPP. And it is ever evolving. So, this makes perfect sense. Because I do think that we need some good competitors in this space. NVIDIA is charging a lot, and I mean a lot, for their GPUs these days. AMD is one of the companies that has been challenging them, and they are really good in the pricing sector now. But it's always better to have more competitors in a space to keep competitiveness high. Otherwise, companies will start charging whatever they want, like NVIDIA has been doing lately. This GPU is actually really good for people to use as well, because there's no GPU in the market that gives you this much VRAM for this low cost, even if you want lower speeds. That makes it actually really good. Another great thing about this is that it only has a power draw of about 150 watts, while an RTX 5090 draws about 550 watts. That's a lot, especially when you consider that the RTX gives you a lot less memory than this. So yeah, there's that. This is also just a single slot GPU, which allows you to install multiple of them in a machine quite easily. It really is a good deal. I don't really know what tokens per second speeds you can get with this, but it should be fine. You can still get some good speeds for inference for bigger models. I hope that the speeds improve and we get some good AI-oriented GPUs soon. They also seem to be working on their own new algorithms, like the Unified Cache Manager, that allocates data according to varying latency requirements across different types of memory, including ultra-fast HBM, standard dynamic random access memory, and solid-state drives, thereby enhancing inference efficiency. So, it can basically combine the NVMe storage with system memory and graphics memory in order to get better speeds in inference, which is kind of cool for sure. That is mostly about it, and I was seeing some talk about this GPU, so I thought I'd share my thoughts as well. I really like that we are getting some new competitors in this space, and I hope we start getting some competitive pricing as well. Let me know what you guys think about this too. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.